What is happening, lords and ladies? Welcome to the channel, and thank you so much for joining me today. I am your liege lord, your mighty, mighty liege lord, the Godless Gamer, and today I'm bringing you episode 3 of our Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord series. We are following the story of Romulus Maximus and his desire to create Rome in Calradia, or the closest that we're going to get to it. He is Roman culture, our character. We made sure he was Roman culture, and the current Roman faction is fragmented. It's broken up into three different, the Northern Empire, the Western Empire, and the Southern Empire, and I guess we just want to reunite them all. I know that's so long term, and we have so many steps before we get there, but every step is going to be fun. Today's uh, episode is going to see us fighting some more battles. We've been fighting in a lot of tournaments, and that's a great way to, you know, progress. It, it's a really great way to progress, one of the best ways to start. But the other great way is to fight some battles. We found some Sea Raiders right at the end of the last episode. And I want to get some more fights in with them. I want to keep equipping my companions and giving them some great equipment. We've been equipping ourselves pretty well, so I don't want to focus too much on myself. Even though I should be selfish. It's This game is all about me and my rise. Not my companion's rise. But we do want to help them out. And by fighting some more Sea Raiders, we can get them uh, some more equipment. And we can get more renown and money and all that stuff. All the things that we want to do. We are still of lowly origins, we're still just a peasant, uh, a pretty glorified peasant, because we've won so many tournaments, but we are still a peasant nonetheless. Let's keep going, let's fight some more battles, let's get our our companions some better gear, and let's have some more fun. By the way, guys, it's actually my birthday. I'm recording this on my birthday, you guys aren't going to see it on my birthday. <laughs> but today is my birthday, and I decided to, that today I would spend my birthday with you guys, Playing one of my favorite medieval games, the great medieval sandbox that is Bannerlord. Oh, we're going to hit some... Oh, there's some more Sea Raiders. Oh, look at them all. Look at all of our victims. Yes. Sea Raiders are excellent. We're going to we're gonna start with these looters as long as we can catch up to them. Now, there might be some cuts here and there, guys, if I have to spend some time, you like, problem. catching up to people and stuff. And you might know, notice some hard cups, cuts that I hope aren't too distracting, but let's get into this. Enough of me jabbering on like a like a fool you guys are here for some battles Listen up. more like a skirmish i wouldn't really call it a battle it's not big enough for that yet but we will get there eventually we did get some few a few more companions we picked one more up uh at the end or towards the end of the last episode mism the outcast he's our quartermaster and i haven't given him a horse yet and he doesn't belong in the cavalry he'll be the captain of the infantry Quartman. the infantry backbone that we're going to be building because we want to model our army like the Romans and they had strong core of infantry. This should be pretty easy. I won't even need them. My men are just... Men, hear me. Attack. They're just here for support. Let's start our battle the way we like to by getting rid of all of our javelins and causing some... Oh, wow. I thought I missed there. Got somebody. Getting rid of all of our javelins and distracting them so our men are... Whoops. <laughs> Maybe we can get another decapitation this episode. Let's see how many dismemberments we can get. Pretty easy. Nobody died. Nobody got injured. But we are leveling up our guys. We want to get, start getting some legionaries, the strongest infantry units. For the Roman roster, we want to we want to get the Roman roster going. I already have a legionary, so I have one. The first of many. All of the loot that we get from looters and stuff, it's all useless to us. We've we've surpassed that level of technology. We are onto bigger and better things. There is a hideout here, so I let the hideout go because that's where these parties are spawning from, these raider parties. And if I take it, if I get rid of the hideout, I lose all the little the little bandits running around. So we want to keep it there for a while. So we'll spend some time just hunt, uh, fighting some sea raiders. Getting some loot. Come on, you can do it. <laughs> you can catch them. We'll get them. 
We just need to get some more horses in our in our. Uh... We're not looking. There for we that. go. We need to get more horses in our party to speed up our party and start getting cavalry units as well. That'll increase the speed of our party, so it should be easier to. Uh... Wow, this is a big guy. He's a big boy. I'm in command. I hope you guys can see everything. These this we have a nighttime battle here. The last episode wasn't so bad. We had a couple of night battles, and I didn't think it turned out so bad. You can see things. These are sea raiders, so we have to be a little bit careful. <laughs> Our first encounter with sea raiders, I got knocked down, so we'll just let them come to us. We'll put our men in shield wall. I need to replace my horse. This horse is slow as hell. Just let them waste their ammo. Get some kills. Warriors! Stay close! Give I tell my men to charge. Ooh, I killed their chief. Ooh, got a decapitation. That's decap number one. Hell yeah. Some good gear we give us to our companions. No deaths. That's what I want to see. Whoops, I hired some uh that's actually okay. I don't have any archers or anything. I accidentally hired some crossbowmen. I'm not gonna be in Blandia territory forever, and I don't want to hire a lot of Landian units. I want to get a lot of uh, the Empire units, but we'll keep them while we have them. At least they'll fill out our party just in case we have to, you know, fight some decently sized battles. I'll take the uh, the range units. That's fine. Another round shield. I had two shields. Perfect. Two of my companions need shields. Got myself some better armor for walking around town. My first concern is their battle gear. I don't care about their civilian garb as much, but I do care about mine. If it's mine, I care about it. Okay, that's everything. We're going to spend some time in town a little bit just to heal up, and there's also a tournament going on, so we'll take part in that tournament. Heavy Night Lance, that's a spear. I'll take it. I can equip one of my mounted companions. This is actually the spear that I'm using, because we won our spear at a tournament.
not a fan of the melee on horseback, I'll be honest. <laughs> Taking everything this guy has. <laughs> and his horse. If I can get on the horse. Oh, one of my companions is competing. Oh, no, no, the guy in the tavern. The guy that's in the tavern. He's the one competing. Wow, they keep missing. Come on, man. For real? There we go. Come on, teammates. It's taking you so long to take this guy out. <laughs> Instant headshot, and I leveled up. Very nice. That's another nice thing about tournaments. It's like increasing your skills. Yes. A little sport. That's some sportsmanship. I like that. Um, I'm very tempted to just get riding all the way up to five so we can level this up quickly. I really want better horses. We're actually going to do some horse shopping. I'm going all out. We're putting that focus point on riding. Learning rate times 10. <laughs> so. I want to become a master horseman as quickly as possible. Let's see if we have any good horses, please. Finally, some saddle horses. Increase my inventory capacity. I'll take that. Too expensive. Not worth it. I do want to give my uh, companions some horses, but I don't want to go crazy. His riding is really good. We'll give him that. Need to get him a saddle too. So now he's mounted. Um, mounting all your companions companions is really good. I know eventually we'll have them be captains because I'll give them, I'll give them banners, and the banners that they have improve like different types like some banners improve inventory and all that kind of stuff so it might be helpful to put them in units but at least for now i want to keep them with me so i can keep them safe that's what that's what i put them in the cavalry i i can keep an eye on them and they're they're not out there just doing their own thing you know so for now we're going to keep them in the cavalry with me where i can keep my eye on them make sure they don't run away from battle We'll sell all this junk, except our new spear. We'll give that to companion number one. We'll give his spear to companion num number two. Sell the rest. And I'm going to start looking into some cavalry units. Um, the ones that I want are in an imperial territory. And we're still up here for now, so let's keep fighting some Sea Raiders. And we'll eventually take this hideout. But we want to keep getting nice equipment. Back off, stranger. I'm not backing off. I'm coming for you. I came to this part of the world Under specifically to hunt you. 
I'm not going anywhere. Uh, nice battlefield. I like it. Soldiers! Onward! Get moving! Riders, hear me! Move! Hear me! Raise your shields! Forward! Get moving! Whoops. Move out! Warriors! Halt! I need to have... Oh, yeah, that's right. I have some archers now. I need to make a separate formation. You have two crossbowmen. Archers! Move! Put them right there. Come on, boy! Ooh, I like how the Arrows! the ground kind of dips away in our favor here. Um, On me. I'm gonna put my men Warriors! in regular line formation. Move get them right here on the hill. I yeah. hope they get here in time. Horse, move out. I'm gonna keep my archers out of this. <laughs> I must have hit that guy in the foot. I hit him in the leg, and it's still a kill shot. I didn't wait to heal up. It's okay. Ooh, nice. Next shot. Oops, my archers are following me. What are you boys doing? What are you guys doing? seem to have much better luck with the spear, but I want to cut people's heads off. I don't know if you can spear somebody's head off. We all have javelins, so I don't need to give them anything. Uh, these javelins are better. They're a little heavier, but they're better. Give them those. R replacing all their javelins. I need to rename my characters. One of my one of my commenters left names, and I just forgot to do it. <laughs> we'll give them the names. Maybe I'll do that between the episodes. I just want to make sure that everybody's good. All right, we're all good. All of this stuff is getting sold. Your best let us be. There's dozens more of us hiding here. Oh yeah, please send them at me so I can take all of their stuff. On my orders. All right, here we go again. Warriors, Another open battlefield. I'll let them come to us. Bowmen, forward! Infantry, move! Riding and throwing is increasing? Yes, please. Some of these Sea Raider bands are getting a little 
too weak for us. <laughs> we have too many men. We just outnumber them. Everybody has a shield. Let's make sure they have the best shield. Yeah. Get our next riding perk. Plus 20% capacity for pack animals in your party. And minus 10% trade penalty for mounts. I do a lot of horse shopping, so that might be helpful. Plus 30% party speed from footmen on horses. Uh, I am gonna get a lot of horses, and I'm eventually gonna get cavalry, so this might be nice. Plus 30% party speed is pretty good. Plus 10% melee damage bonus from speed to mounted troops in your formation. I think I'm gonna do this one. I don't care about carrying capacity. I don't care about each, car each horse's individual carrying capacity. I could just get more horses. You know, if I need more car carrying capacity, I could just get more horses. So, yeah, I'm doing this one instead. Nomadic Traditions. And for throwing, plus 10% damage while using throwing weapons is melee. I don't tend to do that a lot. Plus 15 control skills of infantry, plus 15 vigor skills of archers. Plus 40% damage to mounts with throwing weapons. I try not to waste my throwing weapons on horses, but uh, plus 8% damage to mounts with throwing weapons by troops in your formation. So this is like anti-mount. Um... Am I going to be throwing my javelins at horses a lot? No. That plus 15% control skills and plus 15... Did I say percent? Plus 15 control, plus 15 vigor for my troops is nice. Let's focus on our troops. Let's help them out a bit. We'll do that. What's our riding level? 82. We might be able to start riding some really good horses soon. Okay, let's fight like one or two more Sea Raider battles, and then we're going to raid this hideout. I really don't want to get rid of it, because it's going to get rid of all the parties wandering around. Ooh, there's a 16... a 16 party. Target sighted. I like how they just spawn, and they call themselves Raiders, because the first people that they come across, they just immediately run from you. Your best let us be. There's... No, I don't think so. I'm in command! One man! Onward! Get moving! Alright, pretty much more of this more of the same for now, while we don't have as many men. I can start getting fancy with the formations once we start getting some more variety, you know. Uh How's my health? I didn't take a look. Oh, we're pretty good. I'm being a little greedy, guys. I want to focus on getting my skills up. So, my men take a backseat to my skills. But we are taking risks by doing this. Whoops, I didn't wind that up. Shot. Yeah, spears seem to be the thing that worked for me the best. <laughs> but I want to get rid of my javelins. Like, I have them, so let's get rid of them. Prove my throwing skill. What's nice about javelins is it's like a fire and forget kind of weapon. It's like you find a mass of men and you throw your javelin into the blob, and, you know, odds are you're gonna hit something. Whereas with, like, archery and arrows, like, you have to be, like, really precise with your shots, like, you have to go for the specific headshots and stuff like that. Whereas a javelin, it's like, no matter where it hits the dude, it's gonna hurt, you know? 
I was very greedy this battle. <laughs> oh, we did lose a guy. Or did we lose him, or did he just win it? No, we... Somebody lost their life. He lost his life. Not getting good with a, a lot of the loot. Like, sometimes you get, like, some pretty good shields and some decent swords. I don't think we've gotten a sword yet. Get our next polearm perk and another leadership perk. Nice. Plus 25% chance of dismounting enemy cavalry with a heavy hit. That might be good. A uh, plus 30% chance of knocking enemies back with thrust attacks made with pole arms. That's just in general. That's not specific to being mounted or anything. Um, plus one militia recruitment in the governed settlement. Could care less about that. Plus 10% damage by infantry in your formation against cavalry. Plus, uh, plus 25% chance of dismounting enemy cav with a heavy hit. I. We're doing braced. Do embraced. Our first leadership perk. Plus two experience per day for all troops in your party. Plus four percent ex plus four experience per day to tier one and two troops, so not just to everybody. More ex more experience for arguably a fewer amount of people. And then eventually when your army gets to be where there's everybody is above tier one and two, like you're hardly ever gonna have tier one and two troops, this perk kind of becomes useless whereas this one is good for everybody i think we're gonna do this plus one to troop tiers when recruiting from same culture i'm gonna be recruiting a lot of romans and my culture is the empire culture so this i think this is gonna be better for us combat tips do that one very nice getting our perks <laughs> let's go raid that hideout now We'll raid this hideout. Hopefully in time. Is it going to become daytime? Oh, we just missed it. We have to wait another 24 hours. Let's compete in this tournament here. Ooh, there's a surgeon. Ocheros the surgeon. Let's check out his personality. I might replace him. Uh, I might replace my current surgeon. Or my current... Yeah, surgeon. Right. So right. Wow, look at this guy. He's generous, he's honest, he's merciful, and he's calculating. He's got 120 medicine. That's the word I was looking for, not surgeon. Uh, surgery, it's medicine. Plus 120. Let's check out our current... Our current surgeon. He's got... Sorgar Bitter Draft as medicine 77. So he's almost twice better, and he's he's two times better. Let's see what this guy's skills are at least. Uh, let's check him out because he's got twelve riding. Because the only skills that the new guy has is just medicine and then something else. I forgot what the other skill was. But my current surgeon has some personality traits that might clash with a couple of other of my companions. He's been slowly developing his skills as he's been in my party. He's got 75 Stuart. I think that's where the other... Oh no, it's throwing skills. So his only two skills are medicine and throwing. I can work with him. I can try to improve his skills on the battlefield, but he's going to have to be involved in a lot of battles and... We're going to have a lot of work ahead of us improving his skills, but I like his personality better, and he is a better surgeon. So I'm firing my old surgeon. We're firing Sorgar Bitter Draft. Before we, before we let him go, we have to make sure to take all of his stuff. <laughs> We're just leaving him naked on the street. This way, this way, I don't have to go through the trouble of re-equipping another companion. I can just give him all of his stuff. So we're going to send him out naked. Uh, no, we, no, 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 no. We don't want to discard the items. We want to take them. I'm sorry, guys. 
That was close. Thank you, game, for having warning messages. Okay. We have to be traveling. I think we have to be traveling in order to dismiss people. Or do we have to be in a town? Peace to you. <laughs> He's just naked. We just took all of his stuff. I'm no longer have need of your service, so we're just gonna lead him, leave him stranded naked in the woods. The time has taken its toll on us all, my friend. It's time that you retire. Or right, let's not be so dick about it. Uh, you're not getting along with the rest of the company. It's better you go. No, time has taken its toll. <laughs> He's just naked. We do have to spend the money hiring somebody else again, so I do have to spend that money again, but I have a lot of money. And this guy's imperial culture. I like that, too. That's another, that's another point in his favor. 412 gold? That's not bad. Casualty survival chance plus 1.2%. Healing rate increase for heroes plus 60%. Healing rate increase for troops plus 120%. So this should really help us heal up faster. Worth it. I'm glad I ran across this guy. Let's give him all of his... His former compatriots or... The guy that he replaced. Let's give him all of his stuff. He's kind of short. I'm noticing he's a little short. All right, so he's joining us and actually getting some equipment right off the bat. He doesn't have to wait for it. This is going to be really expensive, but I can ride it. I can ride it and it's better. 6,700 gold. I think that's a worthwhile investment. Um, do you have a lot of money? We're about to compete in a tournament, and we're about to make some money, so let's let's splurge on ourselves. Let's get ourselves a nice horse. Get him on a horse. I'm going to keep horses now. Start keeping them. Unless it's a really, really nice one. I'm going to have to, I'm going to end up paying 10,000 gold, but that's okay. That's okay. That's not too much. It's worth it to get a nice horse. Now let's fight in a tournament. Uh, these, these are foot armor, I believe. Yeah, this is for, this is like leg armor. Yeah. Male, male boots. Stop giving me the crossbow. The no, the no shield. Nobody on our team died. Oh, we got a bill hook. I didn't know what to call it in the last episode. I just just called it some two-handed weapon, but it's a bill hook. That the Valandians like to use. Oh my god, I'm gonna get one shot by these. There we go. No. 
we have to kill this guy. Use this horse as a shield. There we go. Well done. But do say so myself. Finally, we got a shield. You are dead. <laughs> he just wanted to look at me while the, my, completely ignored this guy. All right, let's get this hideout now. That's going to be the next thing we do. Let's see. Is this better? It is. It's a little heavier, but it's better. I'll take it. Ooh, there's some good swords here. I haven't replaced my sword yet. I need a sword that has decent length. This one does. It's got good piercing skill. I don't use a lot of thrusting. I don't thrust a lot with my swords. I just kind of slashing. I mean, I mean, you can thrust with swords, of course, but I mean, they're slashing weapons. They're primary slashing weapons. How much is it? It's 10,000. No wonder it's so good. Too much. I was getting all excited. You can hear it in my voice. I was like, hell yeah, it's too expensive. We need a long sword, a decent length sword, so I can use it from horseback, so... Nope. Did I get rid of my prisoners? I didn't. Oh my goodness, there's a party of 25 of them. We're doing that first. The more people they have in their party, the slower they go. So we should be able to get them quickly. And we have to wait another day to get the hideout. But that's okay. I think it's worth it. 25 men. We should get a decent amount of stuff from this. On my command! Footmen! Move! Archers! Onwards! Yeah! My health is decent. Riding's down 95. We got one at least. Leveled up again. Charge, boys. I won't take all the glory from this field. Where do you think you're going? <laughs> he just ran right at me and let me cut his arm. Let me cut his arm off. Alright. I love the dismemberment so much. Oh, there's another one. Oh my goodness. Can't let him reach the border. Got his head. Yes! That's two heads this episode. All right, a little underwhelming equipment. I thought you'd get better stuff. I'm not replacing my kite shield. I've, I've been over this. I was over this last episode. I like the kite shields better. They're better from horseback than round shields are.
even though the shield is a little lighter and it's a little faster, it's just not as good with coverage, you know? So we're sticking with the kite shield. Take everything else. We'll sell it all and then we'll raid their hideout. It's almost nighttime. We're going to do this first. No, actually, I don't have the health for it yet. We'll wait, we'll wait, I can't even speak. We will wait around for like 24 hours, and then the next time, next night, then we'll hit it. I just want to heal up a little bit. My surgeon is, I'm getting 2% health every, every tick. Alright, hopefully we time this right. Perfect timing. Raiding hideouts is a good opportunity to level up your companions and, and improve their skills a little bit. So let's bring them into this. And we'll try to get our troops up to legionary level. I'm not going to bring my best legionary troops because they can't improve at all. I want to bring people who can improve their skills still. So Let's do it. The raiders are being raided now. Alright, let's give our speech to our men. Let's see what intelligent or inspiring things we have to say. Look at them run! Look at them run. I'm, I'm thinking ahead of time. He's so confident that he knows they're going to run. Really crappy weather, but I guess it's a good, <laughs> good weather for a raid. Catch him unawares. You coward! Yeah! Come on! Hey, was he aiming for me? Athletic skills out at 85. What's this guy thinking about? I wonder what he's thinking about. He's probably thinking about his wife and kids back home. That he's gonna get to see again. Damn it. Nice, and we were on foot that time. <laughs> now we're really just cutting heads off. Nice. I guess we're just getting stronger. Like, as our skills get better, it just becomes more likely. Maybe our athletics. I don't know. I'm just putting that out there. What's our head count this episode? Four? <laughs> Look at this guy just taking his time. He's just slowly. Why isn't that guy reacting? <laughs> Why is he just standing there? Oh, that was an arm. <laughs> Like, I might just have this javelin sticking out of my shoulder. Got uh, another arm. Well done, boys. We will fight the leader one-on-one -on -one so we don't risk our men. You. You cut quite a sore throat, my man. Yeah, <laughs> I cut like three heads off. How about we settle this? One on one. Very well. Let's try to decapitate him. Oh, he went two-handed. He took out the, the Dane axe. Look at 
Literally, I will tear your limbs. Oh, we got his arm. <laughs> and all of his men just witnessed it. They're all just frozen with fear. A legendary round shield. That's better. Is that bigger than the other one? No, nope, they're the same size. This guy needs a spear. So I like that we're equipping our, our companions. That was the whole point of this. Some better javelins for myself, harpoons, more piercing damage, and I still get five of them. They weigh a little bit more, but that's okay. Okay, that's it. So everybody's got all of their slots filled. They all have a primary and a secondary weapon, they all have a shield, and they all have a missile weapon. So that's excellent. Their armor needs work, but we'll do that. I increased my relation by three with near nearby notables because I got rid of that hideout, so everybody locally likes me a little bit more. My charm went up by three levels. We also leveled up our riding, our next riding perk already. Holy crap. Plus 5% top speed to your mount and plus 2% party speed. That'll really help us catch up to people if they're running away from us. Minus 15% accuracy penalty while mounted. Um... Uh, I don't think that's as good. I mean, it would be nice. And that's just accuracy overall with any missile weapon, not just bows and stuff. That's just overall accuracy. So that might be good with throwing javelins, but this is more better. This is more betterer. Plus 5% top speed to your mount, so we'll be faster. And our next focus point will be... Our learning rate for pole arms is 7.5. So is our athletics. Let's work on our throwing now. We're about to get our next throwing perk anyway. Let's leave Landian territory now. We are still working on the quest of talking to notables. That's actually our only active quest, Investigate Noretz's Folly. And we need to travel around and talk to nobles, and we've only talked to one person. So we need to talk to some more nobles. Let's go find some more people. Do some more horse shopping, too, as we leave. Let's check our food supplies. We have two weeks' worth of food, so let's get some more. Let's get another week's worth. Grain. Grain is pretty cheap. Do that. That's fine. No workhorses or anything. Let's check for swords. I don't want any falchions. Or falchions. No thanks. Okay. Moving on. Ooh, some more sea raiders. Yeah. It's what two parties, so both of the party, both of the sea raiders combined into. Uh, now we're fighting uh, 25 of them. I will still start auto-resolving some of these battles. I won't fight every single one manually, but if I do them manually, I can improve my skills a little bit more. And plus... Ooh, look at this open battlefield. We got the slope in our favor. Infantry! Get moving! Arrows! Onwards! One man! Forward! Whoops. Sometimes this is really finicky. This would be a nice place to have some missile troops. We just don't have any. <laughs> I'll put my two... My two archers. Forward. Why does it sound like we're walking on, like, cobblestones or on mud? Ooh, look at that headshot. You like that? 
Hell yeah. One decapitation, please. Improving my pole arm, doing all that. All right, we're taking some damage. Let's, let's get up to our boys. Cavalry charge too. We're charging down a hill. Let's watch him clash. <laughs> it's slow motion. A little anticlimactic. <laughs> Look at that guy. He just got mauled. Well done. Wizners. We've got a Vlandian sergeant now. We even up upgraded one of our guys to the top level of the, uh, at least the melee infantry. These are spear infantry. That's cavalry. That's uh, archers. Just take it all. Pretty sure all the stuff that we have right now is better than all of this. So we'll sell it all and get ourselves moving. Are we in Batanian lands now? Technically, yeah. Let's walk through Batania. Let's go to a Batanian city. We've been to a Vlandian city. We've been to an Imperial city. Let's go to a Batanian city. Yours is not a face I know. What is your name, stranger? I'm Romulus, now get out of my way. I would go into the tavern and disrespect the bar and everything, but we're not looking for any companions right now. I, I do have an empty slot. We have an engineer slot that we need to fill, but we don't have uh, we don't have the the part the companion limit yet. Watch, there's gonna be a. Uh, there's going to be an engineer around. Nope. Let's disrespect it. <laughs> Lively. What is this guy doing? <laughs> He's not dancing or anything. All right, moving on. It's a sausage fest anyway. Let's get moving back to Imperial lands. I want to start in, uh, getting some Romans in my army. very disappointed with the horses i haven't like I, I just want simple work horses just pack animals and none of these places are giving me pack animals would really like to find at least one more person to talk to <laughs> about noretz's folly 
The only person that we talked to... Uh-oh. A courier with a marriage offer for Nathanos, or Nathanos from Gundaroving has arrived. They're offering this woman's hand in marriage to my brother. She's a Sturgeon. Let's check her out. She's a noble from the Sturgeons. And Judah is a member of the Gunda Roving, a noble family of the Sturgeons. She has the reputation of being daring. She doesn't impress me with her skills. I guess her personality is half decent. Like, she's not bad in any way, but... Is she worth it for my brother? Is she worth it for Remus? I don't think so. She's got good riding, she's charming, and she has a decent steward skill. Decline. Not impressive. Only the best for my brother. No, only the best for me, and then the second best for my brother. There's a tournament going on in Poros. Uh, depending on what the... Depending on what the, uh, the prize is... We will or won't do it. Reinforced padded mittens. Alright, not interested. There we go. Saddle horses. Three of them. We're going to eventually want to start... Now, in order to equip cavalry troops, because I'm going to start getting cavalry guys soon. In order to make them cavalry, they start off as foot infantry, and you need horses in order to upgrade them to cavalry. And the best way to do that is with cheap horses. Not super cheap horses, like a Midlands Palfrey. You, like, it says right there, mount type. We don't have to go out all out and get noble mounts or anything, or war mounts. I mean, eventually we'll have to do that to level them up, but initially... Just to get them on horseback, all we need is a simple mount. So you want to start getting cheap mounts in order to start making cavalry. And I think Midland's palfreys are perfect. They're only 240 each. How much is it going to cost me to buy all of them? 2500 That's not bad. I'll take it. I have the money. I'll spend it. It's not going to bankrupt me or anything, so that's good. We'll start saving up Midland's palfreys and low-level mounts, but good enough mounts to create cavalry troops. None of the cavalry troops are here. Oh, I'll take that infantryman. Uh, they're called Imperial Vigla rec Recruits. If we see them, I'll... You'll know it. Um, we'll try to find some. We might be able to find them. There's a good chance I'm fighting, uh, finding cavalry troops in uh, villages and towns that have a good opinion of you so if i if i like did a favor for somebody in a town like one of the uh, town leaders or something and i did them favors and their opinion got really high they would offer me be more likely to offer me some really good troops nope these are just more foot cat or foot infantry i do want infantry but if i increase my party too much it's going to get too expensive to really pay them and and uh pay their salaries here we go. We can just get some equites. Here we go. Imperial Vigla Recruit. That's the kind of recruit that we want to get to make cavalry. And since there's already some equites here, they are on the expensive side. But since they're already mounted, I don't have to spend any money getting horses for them. So I can just buy cavalry straight up. All right. There we go. I'll take it. That's good. Let's keep it moving. We are nearing... Uh, I, I don't want these videos to go on too long, guys, so we might wrap it up soon, but let's keep grabbing some more people. I want to find at least one person to talk to about Noretz's Folly. We've got ten of these schmucks that we've got to talk to. We've only talked to one of them. And the, the one dude that we talked to was in Vlandia. Come on, just one of you. There's one. There we go. That's actually the leader of the, uh, she's the leader of the Southern Empire. Or is it the Northern? Nope, she's the Southern Empire leader. And she's not in a castle, so we don't have to bribe her away to talk to her. We don't have to spend a bunch of money to talk to her. There we if go. If you please, stop there. I would ask for your name. God, you are ugly. I am Romulus. They know me as Romulus. Mark it down, you shall be hearing of me a lot. I am Regia. Regia. 
is how I'm pronouncing it. Rightful Empress of the Calradians. I'm Lady of Lycaron and Oneira. I've heard of you. She's heard of me. At last we meet. You sound like a good man to know. Let us speak together from time to time. Wow, she already wants to she already wants to start a, like a relationship? Can you tell me anything about the Battle of Pendraic? Of course. I did not witness the battle. My husband, Aranikos, spoke frequently frequently of it. He was one of the Emperor's trusted commanders. He could not stop Noretzis from marching to defeat, but he managed to salvage something from the disaster. When the Sturgeons came over the barricades, he managed to lead a group of Noretzis guardsmen out the back. Uh, my husband's small force held together and were joined by stragglers and fugitives. He described the march back, no food, little water, marching day and night to keep ahead of the enemy's outriders. But they survived, the only organized Imperial force to do so. When the city was in a state of panic after the after hearing rumors of what happened, Arenikos kept things from descending into chaos. When it came time for the Senate to choose the next emperor, there was no question that it should be him. I loved him before as a man, but that day learned to love him as something more. What a gift he was to the people of Calradia. Thank you. Now she's a little biased. It was her husband, so of course she's gonna say she's gonna sing his praises. We could do a job for her. She needs horses. I don't think so. You're not, you don't, you don't deserve my, my hard labor yet. Uh, there is a, there is a tournament going on here. Let's end it with a tournament. I really hope that they're giving away a pi a prize horse. Please be giving away a horse. Please, please, please. Uh, more Midlands Palfreys. I'll take those, please. Thank you. Please let the prize be a horse. Nope. Bronze pauldrons with a neck guard. That's shoulder armor, and I'm sure it'll be better than the shoulder armor that I have right now, so let's get it. And then we will wrap up the episode on this. At least I think it's going to be better than what I'm wearing. We'll find out. Let's not fail. <laughs> Our skills are getting better, so tournaments should be getting easier. Everything should be getting easier. <laughs> Too bad there's no dismemberment in uh, tournaments. It would be funny, though. <laughs> this uh, this horse is still functioning with a javelin in his head. Probably not the smartest horse anymore, but he still he still works. Apparently, it missed the vital parts of his brain. Well done, horsey. You turn into a kid. <laughs> I love that. Mirror you. So this is the, the guy we're fighting in the final round. Lost! 
Mr. Bearhead is a veteran forester, so he's an archer unit. A Batanian archer unit? You're out of your element. Victory is ours! Victory is mine. The arm arm, I'm basically, it's not better. I'd be trading better arm armor for less body armor. The, or no, the total, actually it might be better because the total is a 14, whereas this one is only 13 total, but it's heavier. It's way heavier. I'm not going to bother. It might be a little better, but I'm not going to bother. I'll give it to one of my, my companions. I just don't want to weigh myself down too much, you know? I mean, admittedly, I'm on horseback and, and weight doesn't matter so much, but sometimes we are going to be forced to fight on foot, you know? Um, so we'll give it to our companion. We'll help out our companions. So we're doing pretty well. We need to be a little bit careful on how large I make my party at this point. Like, just because I have 72 capacity for my party doesn't mean I need to fill it all. Because it's just going to be expensive to keep these people hired. So I think I'll slow down on the party size. At least we start until we start getting some more money. We need to start thinking about who we're going to uh, give our allegiance to. I do have a, like, kind of a game plan that I normally do for these campaigns. And uh, typically my game plan is to become... Uh, improve my tier, become more famous, and then offer my my, uh, my services to one of the leaders. Uh, typically, I like to do the Vlandians. I uh, pledge fealty to the, the Vlandians, at least at first, because typically the Vlandians, once they start conquering things, they start moving, they start moving eastwards, and immediately to their east is Empire land. So as they start conquering into the east, they're taking Imperial lands, and I can start getting fiefdoms and castles from the conquests. So that's typically why I like to start with the Blandians, because they um, at least pledge fealty at first. I don't have to stay loyal to them forever, but at least to get my land, I do it under the banner of the Blandians. And I think that's what I'm going to do. We still have to start meeting some people. We're still working on that quest, and it is going to take a while. We still have eight more people to talk to, but... That's kind of a, a, a quest that's going on in the background. We want to start working for um, getting ourselves landed and getting ourselves like some domains that we can rule over. That's going to give us some income that we can use to offset the, the cost of uh, having a larger army. So we want to get ourselves landed eventually, and the sooner the better. So I think my game plan is going to be to make my way to Blandia. I, I need to improve my renown and, and everything more as well. I need to improve my clan tier as well. Uh, doing stuff like that helps. Uh, improving my clan tier, getting more renowned, stuff like that. So, getting to the next clan tier, getting another companion, working my way towards Vlandia, earning their loyalty, or earning the, uh, <laughs> earning the, uh, the right to serve the King of the Vlandians. Hopefully they'll start fighting wars in the east and start working their way into, uh, Imperial lands, especially these cities, Orticia, Lageta. I like these cities here. Because they're pretty relatively easy to defend, and Orticia is basically on the crossroads of the continent. It it basically links Asarai territory in the south to like the rest of the world. So this is a nice little choke point for a lot of travelers and trade and all of that. So it's a very it's in a very strategic place. I like where Orticia is settled. So typically I like trying to get Orticia first. And Legeta and Jalmaris, I just like it. You, Orticia has, like, these mountains over here to the east. It's got two bridges that are relatively easy to defend. It. Like, I mean, I know it's it, a lot of it doesn't matter, like, everything, but at least I can... Enemies will come from specific areas, you know? Like, I'm protected from the south. There's no south except over here. You know, it's, it's a nice city. I like Orticia. I really do like it. Imperial lands is all of this. I don't think I've showed this before. All of this is Imperial land. All of this in the center. 
So there's a lot of land that we can get. And I would really like to start over here. So that's my game plan, at least, for now. So we'll start working our way towards Vlandia. And uh, on the way, trying to find some more people to talk to. Increasing our renown. Improving our tier and increasing our reputation. And then hopefully being able to get into the service of uh, the Vlandian king. Romulus. He's going to have to bend the knee to somebody, you know, before people start bending the knee to him. He's got to work his way up the ladder, you know? So we're going to pledge our fealty to somebody. But that's going to be for later, ep later episodes, guys. This is going to be the end of this one. We ended our episode in Oneira, which is nice. And we met the, uh, the leader of the Southern Empire. And she told us this whole bias story about her husband that we don't believe. But... <laughs> Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this one. We had a nice head count, too. We had four heads chopped off. I think it, that was it. Four heads, heads chopped off if I counted right. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for being here. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button down at the bottom of the, uh, the video. Show your appreciation for the content. And uh, let me know what you thought in the comments. Uh, by the way, whoever left those names for characters, I will uh, start renaming some of my companions. And uh, I appreciate your feedback, by the way. So thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Hope to see you guys in the next one. Episode 4 of my Bannerlord series will be coming at you soon. But until then, have a good one, guys.